Hey, what's up, y'all? Welcome to the Relationship Cheat Code, where we give you the game, helping you to stress less and experience your absolute best in your relationship. This right here is my beautiful, incredible, delectable, mm -hmm. edible, indelible wife, Fiona. And this right here is my boot, mm -hmm. my baby. Uh, he's my sweetheart, my business partner, my baby's daddy, mm -hmm. my best friend, my road dog. Yeah. I use that. I'm all that then, son. And so are you, baby. <laughs> hey, y'all, we got an amazing question that came into us, and we want to make sure we get into it in just one second. But first and foremost, Not I do want to check in with question. you. What makes it amazing question. It's an amazing question because it's dynamic. It's layered. Okay. And, and um, it's based off of somebody's awesome situation. <laughs> and so it doesn't, and again, this right here might throw y'all based off of what you like, the question. Awesome but it's situation. awesome because it's a big deal. It's a big deal. Mm -hmm. And so when we get into it, you'll see why it's a big deal. But first and foremost, let me check in with you. Um, if you can give me a word or two, just let me know how you feel. You see, that's him trying to prompt me. Baby, I don't need 20 words. I just need a word or two. Yeah. He's trying mm -hmm. to prompt me right there. <laughs> Keep it concise. Um, I am well. I am a little low energy. Mm -hmm. um, why are you low energy? I'm just a little tired. Okay. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Yeah. But other than that, I feel good. I feel good to be sitting with you. Mm -hmm. uh, to be back in this space on this podcast, having good conversation. And I'm curious as to what's going to come out of it today. So I'm ready. All right, well, let's hop into the question. Okay. So I'm going to read this question um, that has come in. So here it is. I have been in a relationship for one and a half years. I love her very much. I've had both financial and health problems in the last six months of our relationship. But financial problems are problems that can be solved. It only takes time. I'm going to buy a house for us soon. She was very scared and sad when I I had cancer. I think what he's trying to say is when I shared that I had cancer. Mm -hmm. um, she found me money when I needed it. But now it has been the last two weeks and she doesn't even look at me. She comes from work, goes to bed tired, watches TikTok or Instagram for hours and then sleeps. I try to hug, kiss and talk, but it doesn't work. I go to the hospital and come back and she doesn't even ask how I am. But when I ask her, she says she loves me. She says I'm manipulating my illness. The worst thing is that when I am in pain, she tells me to act like a man and not to complain. Mm -mm -mm -mm. Act like a man. Lord, have mercy. I can't understand. I don't know what to do. I'm not strong enough to leave her because I love her. I come home from chemotherapy with grocery bags in my hand. I don't have a car yet and I walk, but she doesn't even seem happy to see me anymore. I couldn't understand which, why she changed. There's one thing I agree with her about. I shouldn't smoke, but sometimes I smoke once a day and when she smells it, all hell breaks loose. She says her head and back hurt because she works and she says she doesn't say it like I do, as in like she don't talk about what's hurting her. But when I say I have cancer, and this is different, she tells me not to complain. I have problems, too. Wow. Do, 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 do. Thank you for sharing your question. Yeah, thank you, bro, for, um, for lifting this up. And, and, you know, one of the things that comes to mind for me, well, first, if you could read the front of that email again, just the top part, I want to get clear. Did he give a timeline? I don't think he did, right? Timeline in terms of what? In terms of, of him discovering or finding out that he had cancer. Well, yeah, I don't know how long it's been, but he, but he said I've had financial and health problems for mm -hmm. the last six months. Mm -hmm. and, okay. uh, and, yeah, and he said something about the last couple of weeks she's been acting different, basically. She's been basically. different. Yeah, so, so when I hear this almost automatically, now you're writing the question, and, and so you're asking us, and, and typically when people share, they are – asking from the perspective of, of um, you know, their position. And so it sounds as though she's really insensitive and she's callous and she's non-caring, at least at this stage of you all's relationship or in this phase of you all's relationship. And that's just whack. I mean, that's just straight whack. And so the thing that I want to say is that... <laughs> what you that with whack? It is. It, it, that just popped up on me. Okay, go ahead. And so, so, so she should show up differently. But I preface me saying she should show up differently because she's in relationship with you and there's two sides to every coin. And, and there's no blame and there's no judgment um, sending prayers and positive energy your way, bro. But the thing that I want to lift up is, is the other piece that comes to my mind is exhaustion. So, so you know, I, I'm dealing with insensitivity on her part and I'm also looking at exhaustion on her part as well, too. And so if I think about this 
being a dynamic in you all's relationship for the past six months and she's giving you money, um, you know, transportation is an issue and now you have this illness that's also an issue. I can just imagine that she feels overwhelmed and maybe even exhausted based off of you all's current state of life and, and um, the current state of the relationship. And so, so to me, those things definitely need to be tended to and additional conversations need to be had. Um, but I would expect some more sensitivity on her part. Um, I'm curious to know how much um, you're extending yourself outside of just giving groceries or bringing groceries home. Um, how vulnerable are you being and how are you attempting to connect in with her so that she sees your heart and fully understands what it is that you're going through? Because it's one thing to say, but I got cancer. It's this thing that girls be saying nowadays. Um, I'm just a girl. And, and, and <laughs> you know, and I'm not equating that with your situation. But what I am saying is, is are you really sharing um, how you're feeling mentally and emotionally? Is she able to connect in with you? Is she able to resonate with um, your illness, the hurt, the fear that you might be experiencing? But this would all come from you all communicating a little bit more. If that's not happening. And and you're just saying, I can't do it because I'm sick, then there may be some compassion exhibited initially. He didn't say he couldn't do nothing. But he over time, he's gonna buy her a house. But over time she just may get tired and, and um and that's what it sounds like. That's a space that it sounds like she's in right now. Yeah. So um I think what's important for um well let me just say this. I am biased. Bow, 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 bow. Why are you biased? I am biased. I am biased. I am always going to be. I'm not saying it's right, but I just want you to know that's where I'm coming from. I'm biased um, towards uh, people who are hurting, who are in pain, who are having life altering, life changing health conditions that they're dealing with, who uh, presumably, if it's cancer, are potentially fighting for you, for your life. Like I'm biased for that person not having it all together. Mm -hmm. They ain't thought to tell you vulnerably about all their emotions and their feelings and you know maybe check on you because they just trying to survive like I'm biased and so I am taken aback and irritated uh for you if you don't have the irritation I have it for you I'm appalled mm -hmm. that you have cancer and she talking about well I got I got problems too and I'm hurting too and I don't talk about it well, even if it wasn't a cancer versus, quote unquote, an everyday hurt or, <laughs> you know, whatever she she's dealing with. So what? Y'all are different people. But especially because it is cancer. Like, what a, what a jackass thing to say. It's just, a, I mean, for real. Now, I'm just, I'm going to give you both sides. Mm -hmm. So I am biased and towards the person who's going through. As a therapist... As a coach, as somebody who has worked in um, psychiatric mental health hospitals, as somebody who has seen um, the, the, the medical system from the perspective of a caregiver, um, having had a child with a chronic health condition and been in that role, as somebody who's worked with uh, young people who have had intellectual disabilities and physical disabilities um, and emotional disturbance and difficulty, right? And all kinds of things. My point is all kinds of things that, that make them more vulnerable. They need more more support. They need more of this. I have been in that place and seen that. And I've been the first person to say, and there's more you can do. And I know it hurts, but you still need to get up and walk. Mm -hmm. The activity is important, not just sitting in the pain. You got to actually move in the pain. You got to move through it. I have not been the only one that said that. Doctors have said that. Uh, you know, we know as mental health uh, practitioners, right, that even when we're in emotional pain, you got to move. You got to get up. You got to go outside. You got to see the sunlight. So I have... Um, a real appreciation for the fact that just because you're going through doesn't mean that all things revolve around you. So I just want to balance yeah. out what I said okay. with that. I'm very clear about that. Mm -hmm. But that's your that's your woman, and she's it's still that's still messed up. I just still think that that mm -hmm. she has to be accountable, um, and maybe uh, not maybe, but she needs to be more present in the impact. If somebody says something, and I'm dealing with cancer, oh, I'm never forgetting that. Yeah, I may forgive you. But I ain't forgetting. And you might not be, you know, as petty as me. You know, you might be like I use a let things roll a little bit more. But I know my head will move slowly to the, like, what did you say? Mm -hmm. Oh, you hurt too? What? So, yeah, so that, I, that, I, that is problematic. I just, I just, I just want to raise that alarm. And I'm sorry, let me, let me just say this little piece. I want to raise that alarm because the way in which you wrote the, 
the 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 letter. This is just now. This may be me projecting onto it, and it wasn't a letter; it's a DM. <laughs> but the way in which you drop the DM to us, right on Instagram, um, the way in which you wrote it makes me think that you are perhaps a person who is like, I just want you know, like he's like, what what's going on? I don't know what's wrong. I say this, and she's doing this. Like you don't you, you the, the, the 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 message doesn't ooze a lot of anger or like. Wait a minute, you know, mm-hmm. self advocacy. It's more like I'm confused, and I and I'm saying I'm going to buy her house, and you know, and things are going to get better, but I'm just having a hard time. And and sometimes let's transfer this to something that we can all learn from. Sometimes the first lesson for anybody, um, particularly when it's an issue where you need to have some self agency or some ability to stand up for yourself or to say, wait a minute, that hurt me. I know that's not okay with me that you would just talk to me like that. Why would you say something like that? It's for you to become aware that's out of pocket. And if you watch it right now, type out of pocket in the chat. Mm-hmm. We, if we can't call it for what it is, if we can't see that it's out of pocket, wow, that's a boundary you just crossed. Like, why would you talk to me like that? I'm going to sit here for a minute and digest the fact that you tell me that you hurt too, but I got cancer. Mm-hmm. How dare you? If we don't, if we don't res- register that appropriately, not that you got to hold on to it, not that you got to be petty like me and go on them. You know what I'm saying? I'm just saying if we don't register it appropriately. Then we might just skip a sense of, wait a minute, I got to take care of myself. Something's often wrong about this and the way mm-hmm. that you relate to me. And then we move into like, I'm not sure what's going on with her. I don't, what can I do to make it better? Wait a minute, before you do that, how do you take care of yourself? Yeah. All strong, healthy relationships have good boundaries in place where you can <coughs> register uh, wait a minute, something is off here and mm-hmm. I'm not okay with it. And I'm not sure that you've done that. And that would be the first thing that I want to say to you is I am appalled and you need to get, maybe not appalled, but you need to be able to register some sense of that's messed up. So I, I definitely get where you're coming from. I'm not as appalled. I do feel as though, um, you know, she's being insensitive. Yes. Yes. However, the thing that stands out to me, the way the letter is written or the DM was written, mm-hmm. It, it comes across as if this has been an ongoing thing. Well, we say it's six months. Yeah, but I'm what's, talking what's about... What's been an ongoing what, thing? So it's been an ongoing thing, at least the way that it's written. It comes across to me that, that him showing up this way, him being in pain, him not having, him being dependent... Um, has been an ongoing thing. As in six months. Is in that what you're saying? Yeah. Mm-hmm. And so, I'm talking about from not just the physical health situation, but I'm talking about the financial standpoint as well, too. And so he, did, he didn't say that, but he did say in the beginning of the DM, not that it was six months, but but he was having challenges financially and she had to give him some money. More recently. And so all I'm saying is that if 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 that's the case and mm-hmm. there's been this issue of um ongoing need, ongoing dependency. Um, mm-hmm. and, and, and it's there's, almost, there's a possibility there. So, so really what I want to say is this, that it comes across to me. And again, I want to be sensitive to what you're expressing because cancer is a mofo and, and I'm sending prayers your way. And, and I want you to get well, bro. The way the DM comes across to me is that you're positioning yourself to be pitied. And so if you're positioning yourself mm. to be pitied, and and this is what your woman is experiencing within the context of you all's relationship. There's there's a point where this thing becomes like, all right, bro, I know you have cancer and I know it's hard. I know it's something heavy that you're carrying. Mm-hmm. Um, as my wife just said a moment ago, there's more that can be done. And 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 you're not the only person in a relationship. You may suck up all the air out of the relationship. And, and, and as a result, um, I feel as though I'm now being neglected. And so when you lift up that whole two week time period, again, I go back to the fact that it sounds as though she just may be exhausted and overwhelmed mm-hmm. because what's being focused on mm-hmm. is all that you have going on. Rightfully so. But how much focus are you giving towards her? Well, and dang, so, he is trying to get through his cancer. Yeah, yeah. I mean, he is trying to get through it, and and she should be there to support him. But again, based off of the way the DM is written, it just at least what I'm getting is that that she may be overwhelmed and exhausted, mm-hmm. and and she may be wondering like, what about me? Now, some of the stuff that she's saying, if there's accuracy in it, um, toughen up, be a man. That's out of pocket right there. 
Hey, what's up, y'all? So we know you're enjoying the episode, but check this out, y'all. We're not just any old random couple that's coming on YouTube every week just giving relationship suggestions and stuff like that. We're way more than that, y'all. Mm-hmm. We're trained therapists and relationship coaches. Yes. This right here is my beautiful, incredible, sensational wife, Yana. And this right here is my dapper, debonair husband, Ayize. So y'all, we just want you to know that there is more. We don't want you to just be a spectator. We want you to get in here with us and join our community. We have all kind of folks who are doing their personal work, their relationship work. We have sister circles and men's lounges and trainings, and we address all kinds of things from infidelity to disconnection to communication issues and sex and intimacy issues. Look, the solution is at Blancourt. Dot com. Join, join us. us. She says he said that she that's says that he is manipulating his illness. So I just don't know what where that's coming from. And that's what I'm saying. It seems to be that that there must be mm-hmm. some long standing stuff in the relationship where again he could possibly be positioning himself to be pitied, and it's an ongoing thing. So it might not even be around just the physical health. There may have been other situations in the context of their relationship where where you know he he comes off as needy or dependent and she's tired of it yeah and she's still wrong even in, even if that is the case she is still wrong i just want to get decisive here you may I think differ she's wrong with in the specifics of what she said i think some of those know, things i mean some I mean, of those things were, were all the mind. times yeah and it's, it's when somebody's yeah. in the midst of uh cancer treatment mm-hmm. like you know and, and, and let me just add this a lot of times when when one of when one partner is feeling fed up or overwhelmed or like I just don't have an um you know it's kind of like in in the mental health world or working with people in the service based industry we talk about burnout a lot mm-hmm. people just get yeah. burned out we get kind of we hear the same traumatic things over and over again so something that we should really be able to hold space for it starts to become regular mm-hmm. and we just don't have it you know mm-hmm. and then they say you need to go do something about that and find a support system and and get what you need so yeah. that you can show up for people in the way that they need and so. I'm sharing that analogy because she's still wrong because she still need to go do what she need to do. Mm-hmm. See, see if, if that's the case, if it's been long standing, yeah. you know, he didn't, he didn't construct for cancer to come up now, you know, at this point in the relationship, true. if it's been long standing, it's probably been long standing and perhaps without her addressing it. Um, and that's on her. Mm-hmm. So now some more time has come and some more pressure has come with this diagnosis and the financial dynamics and so forth. And she's just like, I ain't got it to give. But just because we feel burnout and just because it's justified yeah. doesn't mean that we don't have an impact um, in terms of how we show up and what we say. And then that this you, that you still, you know, you got to pay attention to your environment. Yeah, she's out of position. Yeah, we got to pay attention. Mm-hmm, this is mm-hmm. not the time. Yeah, this I'm, is I'm not in the place. With that. Yeah, I, you know? I agree. I agree wholeheartedly. Um, again, based off of some of the comments and then also based off of the circumstances that that she should be showing up differently. What I wanted to paint was just a possible picture of what is occurring within the context of their relationship mm-hmm. um, where yeah. her being overwhelmed, fed up and done, um, you know, could be could be a thing. Um, but even For with sure. it being a thing, she still has a responsibility to, to show up appropriately, considering the fact that he's dealing with something as severe as this. And so um, she needs to check herself. She needs to get with a support group and, um, you know, find a safe space for her to be able to dump some of those feelings and, and um, emote as she needs to so that she can be better positioned and better able to um, to meet his need. And at the same time, he, too, <coughs> um, you know, I do believe needs to be more communicative and 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 um, and check in with her as well. Yeah. And, 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 and perhaps share this video with her, share this podcast mm-hmm. with her and, and, and um, validate that, you know, I'm not saying that the, the wrong part, you know, in terms of her being wrong, that, that she doesn't have valid feelings or a valid experience or doesn't even have a reason to mm-hmm. feel the way she feels, but the way she's responding to it and managing it in the midst of a critical time for you and in the life of uh, your relationship is out of pocket. And she's got to be able to figure out how to get grounded, as my husband already said, and get support so that she can manage it the right way, get some um, some additional supports in her life. Let me, let me let me just say this one last thing. Okay. Um, based off of the DM, and again, the reason why I'm saying, could this be a situation in which you're positioning yourself to be pitied, is because the language in there, they're buzz phrases, um, you know, challenging his manhood. And, and sometimes people will include those elements in messages or even when we're doing sessions to try to provoke and get a rise out of the audience or try to get a response from people. So when you're talking about, um, you know, 
as a man, you need to be Well, he ain't man. saying she said it. I know, but sometimes, and again, he's saying that she said it. And so, bruh, she very well may be saying it. Or it could be perceived. It. it could be perceived that it's being said. Oh, like you don't think she actually said that? She may not have actually said that. And mm -hmm. so, again, you know, and if it's perceived that, that that's what her energy is or that's mm -hmm. the place that she's in, um, you know, you sharing that with us. Is is again a way to get us to align with you. There's a lot of reading between the lines that we're doing here, but yeah. but I think that that's an important piece because, again, you know, shame on her if if um, she is showing up that way. And then the question would be, you also have a responsibility. I know you said you can't move on based off of circumstances, but but why would you want to be in a relationship with somebody who's saying these negative things to you and about you, and you're dealing with something as serious as cancer? To me, like that. Why? He said he loves her. That ain't the one. Mm -hmm. You know, it's, it's not, I mean, that right there is cancerous mm -hmm. to be in a relationship with somebody who's speaking to you in a way where they're questioning your manhood, demeaning you, and, you know, trying to, to minimize the impact of what it is that you got going on. That, that's, that's toxic. Yeah. And you don't need any more toxicity. That's right. Because of what you're dealing with right now is toxic in and of itself. Yeah. And so you can overcome it but you definitely got to have the right supports in place to be able to do it. And so if she does watch this, I'm almost willing to bet she will probably say, I didn't say those things. Mm -hmm. And I didn't say it the way that it's being written that mm -hmm. I said it. Yeah, and so again, this is possible. where a conversation needs to come into play because y'all need to get on the same page. And if she does say, I did say it, and I did mean it, <laughs> you need to do something about it. And it that. is what it is. <laughs> uh, yeah, boundaries, 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 boundaries. You got to mm -hmm. set boundaries for yourself. Boundaries are not to check anybody else. They're to take care of yourself. Yeah. Boundaries aren't something we, we need to feel inspired to do. We just must make a decision to set them, to say, like, that's not okay. Mm -hmm. I, I'm not, I'm not going to be able to, to deal with that. Like, this is what I need from you, to ask for what you need. Um, and then make room for her to ask for what she needs within reason during mm -hmm. this time and to negotiate that. Yeah. So, yeah, that's all I'm going to say about that. But she's still wrong. Um, <laughs> we're going to go into a second question. We have a second question. Can I put this one in here? I want to do this one because I, I let the person know we were going to be answering it okay. soon. Um, so this one appears to me to be a little more straightforward. Mm -hmm. But we'll see. All right. Um, hello. I have a question. A husband and I separated for six months. I lived with my daughter while he stayed in our home. Long story short, he met a friend, and she put quotations, quotes around that. He met a friend while I was away. We reconciled and are marching on in our 27 years of marriage. Should the friend of the opposite sex stay or go? Is it my place to demand he discard her, or do I give grace since I left my man lonely and vulnerable for six months? <laughs> really, bro? So, um, that's the first thing I want to say. <laughs> <laughs> what? Okay, just off the cuff, right? We can back it up, but I'm just going to go right to the bottom line. You're asking. Should I, I be, my husband and I separated? I rolled out. I don't know the context of why you all separated, but it seems that you feel perhaps a little guilty about that because you said I left him lonely and vulnerable. Y'all are now back together. You're going to continue to move on. He met a friend, and you're, I'm reflecting it back to you because sometimes we don't recognize the ridiculousness of what we're asking. Should I just not even say anything about th this young lady who's a new friend that came on the scene while I was gone? Because, you know, I did leave him. And so that's his friend. But, you know, maybe sh she should still be able to be around, even though she's his friend. Where they do that at? Hell no. Yeah. She needs to not be a factor. Um, if she's his friend, right? There are all kinds of friends. There are legitimate friends. There are real friends. And um, I have talked about this in the past. Any friend of yours is a friend of mine and is a friend of ours. A friend of his is a friend of ours. A friend of mine is a friend of ours. It doesn't mean that, you know, we're equally friends. Like, you know, yeah. some are just primarily my friend or primarily his friend, mm -hmm. but there's nobody who's a friend. I'll tell you that for sure. Mm -hmm. <laughs> and this relationship dynamic, and that is not a healthy thing to have. So I just wanted to reflect that back to you because I think you know the answer. Um, I, I, guilty, guilty feelings. 
um, are not useful to you. You may have regret. You may have remorse. You may feel like I shouldn't have done that. Maybe your husband was pleading and trying to work some stuff out and you just rolled out. Uh, maybe, you know, you all are equally, and usually this is the case, responsible for the separation that happened in terms of what led up to it and, you know, how you got there. Mm -hmm. And perhaps you were inappropriately taking on a burden of being the bad person, as I know sometimes people do, or the bad guy because you left. Or she may have done something and he asked her to leave. Or, or it could be that. Right? We put all, put all the scenarios there. But here's the thing. You know, my husband will weigh in if there's anything that he feels differently on. Whatever led to it. You all have decided that you're working on your marriage. You've decided that we're going to stay together. We're going to march on, as you said. So if you're going to march on and you're not going to play with it, she got to go. What is the purpose of her being now um, a friend of your husband's? And if, and if she is truly a friend, but you done already told us she a friend of the opposite sex, right? So you already told us that ain't what it is. Um, and I was, and I'm, about, I'm about to say what I was about to say, and then I'm going to take it back. How are you going to do that? I'm going to say what I was about to say, and then I'm going to take it back. Because I done seen this happen. I done seen two sides of this coin. I was going to say, which I'm about to say, if she's truly a friend of his, a genuine friend, then she should become a friend of y'all's, right? Mm -hmm. And, you know, she can come over, and she got a, does she have a friend, and y'all can have a double day with her, if that's truly what it is. But, you know, I have seen situations mm -hmm. in all my years where people will be friends and they will bring that mofo over. The, 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 the man or whoever in this situation, we're going to talk about like from a man. A man will bring that woman in the house mm -hmm. with his wife, mm -hmm. knowing that they've been a little too friendly. Mm -hmm. But bring her on up in there. Oh, yeah. So that, you know, you can become friends with my wife and it's all good. And, you know, now you got the nice little setup. So now, you know, next month when... My friend, who's also a friend of ours, mm -hmm. needs me to come fix her sink. I'm going to go over there. And I oh, told you I'm going perfect. over there. I told mm -hmm. you I'm going. It's no secret. You know what I'm saying? Yeah. Set that thing up. People do that consciously and unconsciously. So I'm taking it back. Mm -hmm. Because I'm about <laughs> to say, this, she should just come on. No. If she yeah. was, she was, she came on to the scene when y'all were separated. And she's of the opposite sex. And she like this, a friend in your mind. She got to go. And it's not about you telling him what to do. It's about asking for what you need. But more importantly, even than asking for what you need, it is about what the relationship needs. Mm -hmm. If the relationship is to move forward and to be effective and to be whole and to heal, there can't be nobody. I was about to say something wrong. There can't be nobody on the side. There can't be no friends that you, that you became friends with just within the last few months. And any, even any old friends. Old friends yeah. who ain't about nothing. Like, no. So, please, I hope you have, I hope you feel completely empowered to ask for what you need and to say what, what doesn't work for you. That doesn't work for me. Mm -hmm. That doesn't work. He got a problem with it. It doesn't work for me. That doesn't, that's not us moving towards our, our, um, our best in terms of our relationship. I'm, I'm not trying to run your friends or run me in my situation. Or have, you know, I'm not trying to tell you what to do. I'm telling you what it, it doesn't work for me in terms of what our relationship needs. This is strategic language you hear me using right now, folks, because sometimes people get into power struggles mm -hmm. uh, because they are making it about you telling me what to do mm -hmm. or I'm telling you this or you're like trying to control my, I'm grown, I'm, this, yeah. this many years old. And so when we just shift our language a bit, it, it doesn't work for me because it doesn't feel like it's the best for our relationship. It's not about anything other than what does the relationship need? What do we need so that we can be where we want to be? Not, you know, it, this ain't going to work for me. That ain't going, it ain't happening because I'm not going for it. I'm not the one, right? That becomes a power, mm -hmm. a power, a power uh, dynamic that, that you start to initiate. And so. Yeah, the only reason why she may be asking this question is because she feels guilty. She feels like she was the cause of of the fracture in their relationship or the decision to 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 leave. Right. And so she's carrying the weight of the responsibility and so she's considering this because she wants it to work out. And she wants to not only meet her need, but she wants to meet his need too. But it sounds as though even with you asking this question, sis, that you're actually prioritizing his need over what the relationship needs. And so I'm in agreement with everything my wife said, but I'm only going to say this because sometimes women need to hear a man say it. Um, she is not just a friend. She's, she's not just a friend. She's more than that. And, and so for you to allow 
um, this dynamic to continue and to say or to accept this as a reality, Mm -mm. then what you're doing is fundamentally giving him permission to continue engaging in his entanglement. And and, entanglement. and that's going to be, um, you know, unhealthy for you and unhealthy for y'all. And so you got to cut that, right? You know, be clear about the expectation. Again, as my wife said, not that you're trying to control him, but establish what the boundaries are for you to protect what you and he are trying to create. And again, if he is clear about the fact that he wants to restore, rebuild what it is that you all had, then he will understand. And if she's really a friend then she'll respect it and she'll understand it too. But I suspect that she's not really a friend. She's more than that to him. Mm-hmm. And and so as a result, she may push back and he also may resist. But but in that resistance, again, it's your responsibility to be clear on what it is that you need, the expectations that you have, the boundaries that you're going to set, because you got to make sure you take care of you regardless of what was done for you to be in a situation where you actually yeah. stepped or moved out of the house. Yeah, that's good. Mm-hmm. And, and, you know, sometimes... Um, there's a dynamic when people are coming back together after being separated um, and having difficulty or, you know, any kind of like a major rift in the relationship where we avoid conflict. You know, mm-hmm. we, we things have been going good and we're finally at a place that we're coming back together and we just don't want to bring it up. We don't mm-hmm. want to we don't want to open that up like we're, we're in a better place. Yeah. And so we avoid certain places. But I can guarantee you that that's going to be a place um, that's going to come back and smack both of y'all in the face Mm -hmm. if you don't look at it you got it you got to pay attention to it and you got to be willing to bring it up knowing that it might cause some you know funky energy or he might be in his feelings or you know like real relationships are not all roses and peaches and petals and Mm -hmm. champagne and 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 so when we come back from a funky ass place We've got to stop, and this is in general, but I'm, of course, speaking specifically to your situation. We've got to stop being afraid of the disconnect Mm -hmm. and being afraid of the friction and being afraid of the conflict and recognize that if we really want to grow, that we actually will be willing to consciously and intentionally go into it, get into it, and then step out of it Mm -hmm. go into it and step out of it that is a healthy real relationship avoiding it walking around it, leaving it sitting in your relationship for 10 and 15 20 years never talking about certain things Mm -hmm. never bringing things to a final resolution never making amends over certain things not touching certain things only going this far because that is dysfunctional as hell and Mm -hmm. that is not a real trusting relationship Mm -hmm. because you're not willing both of you all oftentimes not by choice but because of the way we've been raised because of our lack of skill, you know, um, our emotional fragility, mm-hmm. right? Whatever it is, we, we don't know how to stand in those places and not feel like, oh my God, we're going to go back, you know, 25 paces. Yeah. We're going to fall all apart. You won't, but you, you certainly ain't going to do no better if you don't practice, mm-hmm. practice, practice having the hard conversations, doing the hard things and not looking at things for what they are. Because the fact that you wrote this question, I love you, sis. Sending you love. Well, you should look at things for what they are. But the fact that you wrote this question. Mm-hmm. So he got a friend. So should I just let, leave it alone and not ask him to do nothing, discard her or push her to the side because we getting back together because I, I rolled out? What's she going to do? So we, Yeah, just let her stay. What you think we was going to say? You know what I'm saying? The, so I'm not going on you, no judgment, but I'm keeping it 100 with you, right? Like... The, the fact that you that you that you think that the, uh, that you would put that forward right says that that there's a whole lot of avoidance going on yeah. and there's a whole lot of discomfort because you know the answer girl mm-hmm. <laughs> you know the answer and so so my last piece is when we know the answer and when we have clarity about something oftentimes we will play confused or we will we don't mean to be playing we don't know we're doing it but we'll be confused and unsure because we, we got to stay in that place so that we can prevent ourselves from fully knowing what we need to do because then that prevents us from being accountable for doing what we need to do mm-hmm. and so if nothing else from today i hope that you've gotten more clarity um and stop being confused you ain't confused you know exactly what you need to do you already know but if you find that there is a gap between the clarity you have and the skill or will or courage that you have mm-hmm. to do the thing that's okay yeah you got to first get clear and stop playing. 
But then once you get clear, I don't have the skill. I don't know how to do it. I don't know how to bring it up. I don't know what to mm-hmm. do when he walks out the room. I don't I don't feel like I can pull it together every time I try. My courage ain't right. Then you, you go and get that. You can work on that. Mm-hmm. And you can do that by coming on into our community. You yeah. can do that by working with us uh, individually or together. There's lots of resources out there in the world. So be encouraged. But don't. Don't ask that question to nobody no more. You already know what you got to do. <laughs> that's it. And that's all. <laughs> <laughs> we want to thank y'all for watching another episode of the Relationship Cheat Code. Please like, please subscribe, and please share. Please watch our other videos too, y'all. It's dope. It's dope. Mm-hmm. We're doing big things. And we're doing big things in our community. And so, again, check us out. And we'll connect in with y'all next time. Peace. Peace, y'all.